Oh, happy day! Greetings and welcome back to SmartWatchSticks.com. We're unveiling a smart woo, woo, watch like none other, the X11. This is an Android, yep, full-on Android smartwatch with dual cameras where they belong. It's great. It's going to have all kinds of capabilities. And the X11 smartwatch, a little manual comes along with it that basically gives you a disclaimer and contents packing list and some function buttons on it uh, really really simple stuff how to charge it the fact that it uses a nano sim for its uh, cellular communication common problems in use in the box now we have the module itself which is humongous it is it's really really great it's not the biggest in the world which is too big but it's close to it, which is, wow, yeah, it's awesome. A very, very nice design on this one. We'll look deeper onto that. You've got a two-pin magnetically coupled charging four-point uh, connector. That means this puppy will transfer data back and forth to the computer, and it does an excellent, excellent job of that. You got this little blue thing that you can stick in here to open the SIM drawer. Although on the video, I tried to use my fingernail and it wouldn't work. So I'm going to do it for you now to show you <laughs> what the SIM drawer looks like. I do segments of the video in different orders and uh, yeah, I, I know I couldn't get it open. But this tool is for that purpose. And then you've got a um, pair of band um, pieces that give it a nice kind of a gray silver look. Let's turn it on. Oh, they're going to have my hide. I forgot to tell you where to get it. I'm so excited to show it to you. Guys, you can get this wholesale pricing. Look at this insane 41 to 49. The price difference depends on what configuration you've got for it. The X11 from Alibaba.com. We're not talking AliExpress or Banggood or retail outlets. We're talking the wholesale company that generally sells business to business, but they've got a few vendors in here using what's called the Alibaba Guarantee and Trade Assurance Programs that um, allow you to be able to pick up just a single unit for a really nice discounted price and again the configuration is what drives that price you can get a 2 gigabyte 32 gig uh, configuration for the lower price or pump it up and I recommend doing this it's not even 10 bucks for a 4 gigabyte to 64 gigabytes okay the link in the show notes will take you to that particular page directly there and this is where we got the one you're going to see today if you'd like to check out other goodies at alibaba.com across the board in wearable technology got another link for you bit.ly slash alibaba wearables That'll take you in the front door of all the Alibaba guaranteed sites. And you look for the ones that... Uh, I got a video I'll link to you that explains how to do this properly. But uh, that's the link that gets you started. Now, spec-wise, the X11 is sporting a 1.85-inch display. That's why it looks so nice. 1380 milliamp hour battery in this one. As we mentioned, a uh, 2 plus 32 and a 4 plus 64 gig uh, configuration. You got 360 by 360 screen resolution on this one. Operating system Android 8.1. There's all the different processing chips and whatnot in it and your frequencies for 3G and 4G communication. Well, first, this design is awesome. I really, really like it. Look at the nice integrated steel case on here. The cameras, two of them are in exactly where they should be. A front-facing one above the screen and the forward-facing one not over on the side. But check it out, right over the band. And when it's on your arm, it clears the edge of the band and gives you a really nice view. you got one round button up here that twirls, and you've got a push button down here. Uh, and a SIM card slot right over here, which if I use my long fingernail, I purposely didn't cut it for the video. Ah, no, I think I'm going to need a tool. Well, anyway, you pull that out. There's a SIM tray there, and that's where you put the SIM card in to give it uh, SIM connectivity in your country on your frequency with your carrier. Sadly, I have not yet had success in the USA with T-Mobile, which is a GSM provider. Press and hold the bottom button. It vibrates, gives you 5G LTE. I sure hope I can get this uh, to work with the... Uh, 
uh, the cell system, that would be great. There's calls and then there's data. You know, there's a lot to, to consider. And if I have some updates, I'll have them in the show notes for you on uh, 5G calls, um, VOIP, where you're doing calls over internet as data, and of course, basic data, if you can get on the internet and do your Google searches and um, video conferencing and all those kind of things. The boot up is a little long, but it's beautiful. Look at that spinning globe. Do you see where you are? I thought so. Yeah, that's a nice globe. Uh, clouds and everything. But it is a long looping thing. And then once it comes up, It'll start Android, and now we're land, uh, landing in this thing. Yes, I know. I see it vibrating, too. That's a bug of my watch. I've talked to other people. They don't have that flickering uh, thing going on that only happens when it's bright white. So anomaly with mine. I probably need to send it back for a replacement, but I want to get this review out. You notice I've got two things, an FWatchOS 3.0 and something called Watch Clock Skin. We're going to go with this one first. That's the standard um, launcher. The other one is called the universal launcher. And I'm playing with that a little bit. It's advanced. It'll be a little bit later on um, to show you some of the capabilities you can do with this Android watch. Right now, we've landed in one watch face. Um, this is a stock face that they uh, open it up with. If you press and hold, it'll go into the option to switch to other watch faces. You have a digital one like that. You have a funky one like that called Graffiti, this digital one, an analog one with your power level on it, another one like that that looked very similar to the other one, something they call an APP LLP6 Pro. <laughs> There's one thing to plagiarize, it's another one to tell exactly who you're stealing from, but whatever. And then more, and when you go into more, when you're on Wi-Fi or hopefully connected cellularly, you can get um, listings of dials and uh, some other stuff, themes that you can put in for your icons and stuff. And these are the other dials. There's just very few of them, and you notice they're already installed. Um, so there's very little in the way of stock watch faces with this particular watch. We'll pop that one up for you. But they're nice, the ones that come with it. As an alternative to this, uh, I know a lot of you like to play with watch faces. Later on, we're going to show you that universal launcher switchover where you can put any of your stock Android uh, watch faces from the past on, on the device. But first, let's run through its basic operation. From the home screen, you can swipe down and you get a bunch of controls that are off the screen. They're so big. You've got settings, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. This is cellular with the SIM card in. If it's working, that can light up blue. Airplane mode, of course. This one lets you uh, clear all the different things that you've been running or individually clear them out. It comes back to what's called home, and home is where we're in our launchers. And I'm just going to do once, and we come right back again. So we're in the stock launcher still. Uh, you can clean things up. Uh, your overall brightness level. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Come back here. What are we looking at? Okay, tap brightness level. It shows you uh, we're at like 19% wallpaper. This is getting now into the settings. Uh, sleep after 30 seconds up to 30 minutes, which is almost like always on. And then your font size, you can have default or bigger and in advanced stuff we're going to show you in a, when we get into the system stuff. Then there's phone calling, of course. And then there's your speaker that you can vibrate, silence, or have it loud for speaker sounds. Shows we're on Wi-Fi on this one, and that is lit up, and I am indeed on Wi-Fi. So let's get back out of here to the watch face. Come over this way, nothing happens. Come over this way... He says nothing happens, but I know something happens if you do it good enough. This is your step count for the day. I haven't done any of this stuff. Just show you that it's in the watch. It's quasi a sports fitness watch. If you do your steps, you'll get step count. If you uh, wear it and you have uh, heart rate readings on here, you'll get a chart and you'll get the current reading. And it's flashing a red diode, interestingly, that if you cover it long enough, you'll get a reading up there and that'll become part of it slide it again and now you're getting your blood oxygen that should also still be a red diode as there it gets good and bright when it sees you and it'll give you your percentage of blood oxygen and that's it so you have these three cards here from your watch face and going up 
is your notification sent from the phone. And that's it. You can't go anywhere from here. And from here, you can't go anywhere left or right. So very, very limited operating system. You get into your app drawer by pressing here. The background, here's a nice bright moon, um, is uh, changeable. You can make it all black if you want to or add those other themes that you saw. So you have basic dialing, uh, switching your overall styles of how it shows to all these different ways of presenting your, um, your app drawer listing. Um, then your dial for making phone calls, again, contacts if you got your SIM card set up in it. And then the camera, which is the stock camera on here, just to show you quickly, I can tap that. There it is looking straight out at the door. I can tap to take a picture, and it just took a picture. I can swipe to change cameras. Well, swiping that way puts it away. Swiping that way changes it to the photo album. Okay, swipe to change cameras. How about that way? There we go. There, I am over in the corner. Wow, it's got a bad latency to it. Look at that. That's characteristic of this app because I'll show you a couple of other things where it's not like that. But this is the stock camera app. Tap to take a picture. That was the picture. Press, and now I'm recording a video. But notice that the uh, illumination went way down, but it is recording it. And then when you finish, it probably comes back to full brightness. And we've got that there. And then if I switch the photo album, here's the video. I'm going to just use the uh, video player. You could hear me, I think. Um, so that's there. And back out of here, there's a picture that I took, which is not very crisp and clear. It was moving around a little bit. So... Not real happy with the camera on this one, sadly. Uh, but this is the stock camera, and that's all it does. Records video, switch over to take a picture with the camera, and switch cameras. Now, get back to the apps. There's your album. You can look at all of those. We kind of saw those. you got a ba basic step counter we already looked at, your messages. Setup. We'll come back to the settings later. you got a little calculator built into this one. He says, come on. Uh, very, very limited and not very pretty in my estimation, but it does work for you. You've got a basic calendar, not the Google Calendar, though you should be able to put Google Calendar in here. You may have to suppress this one first in the settings uh, to get the Google Calendar to override, but yeah, you have to try that. This is new video chat, it's saying, uh, to place a video call. Haven't played with that one, but it is in here. I don't know if your client on the other end needs to have a matching video call system or if this will interface with your uh, cell system uh, video calling or what. Uh, but there it is, application uh, market. This is a special Chinese market that you can turn on. Notice it's still vibrating whenever there's a white screen on here. And you notice it's in a square. I have it set up to be in a square right now so it's easier to read. You can change that. We'll show you that with the bottom button to make it full circle. But then some of this will be cut off. And I don't want that while we're looking at the apps. So I'm just going to bail out of here, not use that one. There's some tools in here. It's not doing it when I touch that. I have to touch the circle, it looks like. There's a voice recorder, alarm clock, your calendar and calculator, clean everything up, and a stopwatch. So those are basically archived in that tool folder. There's the heart rate. There's your video player and uh, the QR code to bind and do download uh, the QR code for, I presume, um, pairing this with a phone. But... I don't know. This is another area that needs some more explanation, and you can download here to register now. I guess you guys are seeing it, so you can hit the QR code and see where it takes you. I'll probably play with that later as well. If there's any information about that, I'll add it to the show notes for you. Uh, more applications it talks about, and these are applications that have been installed. The Google Play Store, Maps... These are ones that I have uh, installed uh, through side loading. 
where I've transferred them over um, from an external drive when this is connected to the computer, like GPS tests, security settings, speed tests, things like that to check out performance on this one. So those are listed in, in there. And then your overall file management where you have the different categories and you've got, uh, this is where the apps show up. So when I install them, look at all of them. I've got tons and tons of them that are in here as APKs. And then I selectively install them as I want to test them out simply by touching them and going through the install. But there is a lot of limitations on this. Most of them, it doesn't want to install. We'll try that one. It comes up and it'll tell you that uh, it's got a problem installing it. And you uh, you can delete it or not. I'll say cancel. Well, in this case, it did install this radio show program. Um, but other ones, it'll say it can't install it. But there's another button down below that you can say, like, I can, I want to override that and install it anyway. And that gains access to it for you to install. That's really important on a lot of these that um, I'll be showing you later on that are not even in the Google Play Store anymore, um, that you have to sideload them in that way. There's the Blood Oxygen app itself, the Google Play Store. This Zits, yeah, the zitting theme. This is where you can come in and change to the different themes and uh, and dials that you want to. That's what we got to when we went all the way through uh, the watch faces when we were holding down. You got Google Maps and Chrome, of course. And now we're getting into all the apps that I've installed, which I'll save uh, for later. Um, we'll be uh, doing more advanced stuff on that. But that's basically your app drawer here. So we're going to start, first of all, by coming down in here and um, going into the system information. Now, Wi-Fi is where you'll go in and set up your router with password and all that other stuff. Bluetooth, uh, same thing. If you're going to Bluetooth connect to earbuds or whatever, that would go in there. Personalization, this is where you can do your watch face management. That's changing your faces, changing the theme settings which are these different ways that your apps appear, right? Um, wallpaper settings. There's where we have the moon. You can add more or you can just go with blank, which I'll switch back to. And that's just the basic personalization that you've got over here. The slide back doesn't often work. You have to use the top button to get back. Uh, screen versus display, there's your overall brightness level adjustment, screen time, we showed you that, display size, uh, this is where you can change the fonts, make them larger or smaller from the stock operating system. Your sound settings for profile and phone ring, what the sounds will sound like, volume levels, and touch sound if you're going to hear it make little clicks and things, your languages that are supported. English is set up on this one. You can add languages to it um, directly. So it's not taking up a lot of space on your limited watch memory, right? For multiple languages you'll never use. The software version information, your IMEI number for phone calling, all that's in there. Then you can restore settings, do upgrades. Make sure you check to see if there are any upgrades waiting for you. This is the current version on here, 2024, April 11th. And uh, it'll go through and check. And if you have any, it'll update them for you. Again, you got to be on Wi-Fi for that to, to happen. You can shut down your IMEI number again. Remember, IMEI is what the device that you put a SIM card into gets registered with that SIM card with your carrier. And depending on the carrier and um, the information that and, and processes that they use your IMEI number may or may not be recognized in your country it may or may not work uh, it's a really trial and error type of thing uh, like I said I'm still working to try to get T-Mobile to operate on this watch we just went in this more settings there's your wireless networking date and time input this is where you can change and i've downloaded the gboard google's uh keyboard highly recommend that works well this is really crazy comes up first in chinese there's a button that doesn't say switch to language but you got to push that and it'll switch to english and then say en and then you can operate the keyboard in english remember that make a note of the time of where you are in the video so when you're all frustrated with the keyboard you can come back here and listen to that again uh, gboard is the one that i have turned on 
Um, when you download it, of course, you can touch the button and speak to it if you're on Wi-Fi. Uh, it makes it really great for data entry. Application management now. This is where all of your apps that are installed are in here, and you can go into any of them like this, uninstall them, brute force change them, permission storage, all of the typical things that you would do when you're working with apps. So you have somewhat good access to the overall system information in here. It's a subset, mind you. It's not really robust. And for that, you need to go deeper, right? This is a good time to plug the folks at fullandroidwatch.org. Fullandroidwatch.org. We'll have the link in the show notes. They've got links to the different watch faces you're about to see. Universal Launcher. I'll definitely have the link to that. I'm about to move into that for you. You're going to want that. You're going to definitely want that on all of your Android watches if they don't run your uh, standard uh, Android watch faces like the older Android 7 and earlier watches would do. Oh, 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 I forgot to tell you when you uh, double tap the lower button, nothing happens. But if you press and hold a long time, you get into this. And this is where, wow, it was in circle. This is where you can switch from circle to square for the display uh, information on the screen. You can power off, you can reset, and you can do an SOS thing. Uh, I'm going to go back to circle, and I'm going to come back out of here. And I'm going to actually set up a couple of things here for you. These are some of my favorites going all the way down here. I want a thing called floating toucher. That puts this little dot on the screen right there. And I want to go to uh, display brightness in here as well which is a thing that's going to put this little bar here that lets me adjust the brightness dynamically by sliding it. These are not in the Google Play Store, sadly, and um, but I do have a link to our resource guide where you can download copies of them and install them directly if you'd like to on yours. The reason I did this is I've already got this configured. It brings up this little circle in here, and I've got other wonderful things in here, like Organize Drawer, that brings now all of your apps up alphabetically, and will resequence those when you add and take the apps out. You can uh, set up, uh, when you make it a square, you can get access to the controls and reload them all, and they'll be sequentially in there. Whoops. Again, it doesn't like uh, sliding out of it, so there we go. Um, but I can get, actually get into the, the launcher experience down here. But an easier way for me is to tap here and hit the home button. Home is basically saying relaunch the uh, launcher. And this is the stock launcher, but we're going to switch over now to watch clock skin. When I do that now, we are... It asked ask me about uh, making uh, widgets, and I always say okay and then bail out of that. And it loads up now in a whole different set of watch faces. This is a classic, uh, classic custom watch face. Really neat one because it's ticking individually. And if those of you familiar with the Android watches, they always had a moving analog uh, second hand. There's a tremendous amount of code behind this. This is the one I usually test to see if it'll work or not. That's masking fif uh, 59 different shadows over that and only one of them is showing through a ticking thing here very very elaborate watch face press and hold this if you set it up for that or you can double tap it there we go okay depends on how you got the setting set and now you're into the watch faces and now you can see there are all kinds of different watch faces these are a lot of my favorite ones this is one from the full android watch um, team uh, sorry, I'm not sure who created this one or the name of it, so I apologize for not having credits for it. I'll try to find and put the link to this specific one in the show notes. But this is the kind of creativity that the gang that are deep into Android watches are playing with over at fullandroidwatch.org. Fullandroidwatch.org. Go over there, set up an account, get in, check it out. It's awesome. These, like I said, are your stock Android watch faces, but a lot of you familiar with um, the stuff know that there's Wear OS watches too. There are things that end in dot watch, and sure enough, this is advanced enough. I got to get way past here because I put them all the way down here and started them all with Wear OS as a W at the very end. Here we go. There we go. Now we're getting into them. These are the uh, uh, 
launcher watch faces that work in your uh, Samsung type watches and whatnot, Wear OS. And I got these set up so um, they'll show not only the stock face, but when it times out, you can make a timeout face. So in this case, the timeout face is the digital time with the power level. Tap it and it gives you the date and whatnot. And we're back into the regular watch face. These are some that I uh, created a long, long time ago when I was playing with uh, different uh, Wear OS type stuff. And now these are some that other people have made. And I, again, apologies, I don't know who you are or where you are, but this is one as an example. And when it times out, it goes into just the watch hands. So more flexibility in the dot watch watch faces. And if you use something like Facer, um, you know, as a, a service, you can download what other people have created or even create your own. Uh, lots of good things that you can do with that. Yeah, it just goes on and on and on. Again, all of these are interesting watch faces that multiple people have created all over the place. There, here's another one, Fossil Touch. So, watch faces. But this is a full launcher, guys. This is not just faces. Uh, when you swipe down now, you're getting into three different dots. It's giving you basic information. I know, it started at almost 100%, right? And we're down to 86 Power goes down quickly on Android watches, especially if you have it in full brightness, which is close to what we're doing, um, and you're doing a lot with it. Is that about the right level? Okay. You come over here, you can see we have all these different controls. Um, this is where you can silence the watch. I like that if you want to. Um, here you have control to silence and alert, a high contrast alert and such, Bluetooth, uh, airplane, all the kind of stuff we've seen before. And then this is the Launcher 3.7 version we're running. And these are all the different kind of settings now that you can contour this actual uh, launcher to meet your particular needs. How you select skins. Oh, the double tap isn't working because I have that unchecked. Da -da, you can change the watch faces or long press, you can change it. Make sure you have one of those two selected, uh, if not both of them widgets and whatnot will show you that skins and so forth health information interfacing with weather um yeah robust stuff and this one always on display remember i told you those wear os watches i'll have an always on um level to them uh, that can show if you have that turned on as well and then you can just basically restart the launcher right there if you want to when you do it comes back i don't know why into that page probably because i don't know how to use it properly um and then it comes back here and so that we got to from the third thing over here and from here i can go left for notifications sent from the phone right i get into my app drawer right this is all of the apps just like before on the other launcher come over one more i've got a stopwatch i think built into here with stop start restart clear and a little calculator, ricktop round calculator. And these are other apps that you can get from the Google Play Store as well. And there's your answer, much nicer uh, calculator. Notice it preserved the uh, brightness level and the ability to uh, go directly into the um, floating toucher app. So I'm going to take you on another little dive. Now I'm in Floating Touch, or I've got a couple of things that I've installed here. For those of you who like to play with the cameras, this one's called um, Dash Cam. Dash Cam. I have so many I'm having a hard time remembering them. Watch what happens. When I tap the button, and this is how I've got it configured. It comes up blank. It says Dash Cam there. It's in the full circle mode, and there's a record button down there. But there's no picture. I can have it have a picture if I wanted to, but I don't. Because I'm just going to use this and have it set. So if I decide I want to start video recording like a car dash cam, I tap the button and all of a sudden, boom, it begins. Now I'm getting the picture here. You can see outside it's showing me the time. It can either make a recording sound or not. You can suppress that if you want to. And it'll just keep doing this. Uh, you can set for whatever length you want. I've got it set for two minutes. After two minutes, it finishes that clip and starts another one. You can set up as many as you want. I've got 15 of those. So after a half an hour, it'll start going back and erasing this first clip. Same way a car dash cam works. This, I believe, is in the Play Store dash cam. Um, I'll live, have a link to the store version of it in the show notes uh, if 
uh, if it is there. But what I really like about this is I can stop it. It turns the camera off, and then a few seconds later, it comes right back to the watch face. But, guys, it's still recording in the background, and you can do whatever you want. You can do other, uh, you know, go to other things. Uh, when you're ready, go back into it whichever way you want to. Uh, easiest for me, if I can get my thumb to work, is to hit that button. And we're right back into it again. Now, a little glitch. It doesn't come back and show you what it's recording, but it is still recording. And so when I hit the stop button on this, it finishes that, puts it away in a special file area that I can't get access to on the, the watch itself. It's really weird. I haven't figured that. It's in one of those android.com uh, subdirectories. But when I actually uh, connect the wire to the computer, it pops up right there and it's easy to transfer the files over to the computer. And you can set them uh, all the way up to uh, full HD, FHD, 1080p. Um, normally it runs in about 720, uh, which is HD. Uh, and they're rectangular. They're taller than they are wide. That's the orientation of the camera. But it works well. With that particular one, I don't have a way to switch to the front camera. It's dash cam and it's meant for basically doing your... Um, remote video and like I say you, you can actually set it so when you launch it it immediately starts recording if you'd like to do that as well so if you want to catch what's happening instantly you get into it and and you got you got it to go and uh, by putting it in this uh, method of so uh, super set this on top of the the floating toucher on top of the launcher below you're able to get to it really quickly this other one is a uh, instant camera picture and it just or app and it just took a quick picture right there and comes right back out of it again so if you're trying to get a snapshot of something quickly while you have it on your arm uh, that'll do it for you and that's in a folder that you can then get access to the other thing while we're still in the launcher you can come down here you can set it up and you can add widgets sorry about the vibrating again so for example i could go to the photo gallery and I could choose an album, and I could choose uh, Insta Camera right here. And now, when I come down, there's all the pictures I've taken um, with the Insta Camera. And this is the one. We could just do Gallery, I guess. And that's what it looks like. There's another one I took following a fire truck. Just by holding my watch up over the steering wheel, tapping uh, that Insta camera button, and um, taking the picture. So that's another way. Yesterday, today, albums, my goodness, all kinds of stuff. And this is uh, coming from the... There we go. <laughs> You have to slide down. That's right. That's where we got to it. This is a widget, and I could come over and I could add other widgets to it. One problem I've had with this launcher somehow, uh, I'm brand new to it. I wish I played with it a long time ago so I, I could explain it better. I seem to lose these widgets when I go through reboots on this thing or changing launchers, and then I have to reset them up again. But it would be great because I got different camera apps in here, and you can set the gallery to show different folders, so I could literally be paging through the different galleries for the uh, basically the different um, camera apps that I'm using when I'm working with this. So... Wow. Okay. I think that's everything I want to share with you about the Universal Launcher. Again, if I come back here to Home and switch here, I come back to the Stock Launcher now. And I'm still got the brightness control and whatnot. I can lower it down so it's not washing out the screen. It takes a little bit longer to boot up on the Stock Launcher. And there we're back to one of the very few selected uh, watch faces that we have available to us on this one uh, that you saw from the very beginning. Okay, that's a quick overview of a lot of the capabilities of straight out of the box, the X11 and its operating system and enhancements that you can add with additional apps to embellish the cameras a bit as well as other things that you may want to do with it as, uh, as part of the, the joy of owning one of these Android watches. So let me recap for you, show you what it looks like on, uh, how you can get one of these. And 
We are getting creative on this channel to try to give you uh, alternative ideas and ways of uh, scoring these watches at really good prices. So the recommendation on this particular one is to uh, hop over to the wholesale site, which is Alibaba.com, using the link in the show notes I've got for you to pick up the X11, part of the Alibaba Guarantee Program, the Trade Assurance Program. i got a link that explains all of that for you as well in an earlier video. Anyway, cutting through all that, you can get this puppy for, wow, between about a little over 40 to 50 bucks. Uh, and that's the different size configuration. Uh, 2 gigabyte 32 uh, or 4 gigabyte with 64 gigabytes of storage for right around $50 plus a little bit of shipping wholesale pricing for one unit delivered directly to you and again if you want to you can use this particular link here bit.ly slash Alibaba wearables that'll take you to a grand search engine scheme that is set up for vendors that utilize the Alibaba guaranteed wholesale uh, pricing and um, the trade assurance program. So you can make sure that what you get is being backed by and covered through Alibaba.com. Make sense? All right. Thanks for watching you guys and we will see you again soon. Enjoy your Android watch.